Hi everybody, uh, I'm Brian aka The Library Geek and today I am here to show you how to use our online catalog the best so that you can find all of the stuff you're looking for including books, audiobooks. Um, I'm going to go over some of my little tips and tricks that I use as a reference librarian to find stuff for people that come in looking for things. Um, and I'm also going to just show you some new features that the catalog has uh, that were recently implemented. So we're just going to dive right in. Um, so one of the things to remember is that the catalog unfortunately is not google and it's not as smart as google which is a bummer but it is what it is um so one of the most common mistakes that i find people make is that they don't spell something correctly and the catalog doesn't give them what they're looking for so for example let's say that i was looking for uh dr shivago um i do not know how to spell dr shivago I think this is right. This makes sense that it's right, but I also know it's Russian, and Russian things are often spelled different than I expect. I'm going to hit enter, um, and it's going to show me no hits. So the tip is this. When trying to search for something in the catalog, make sure that that thing exists outside of the catalog in the real world otherwise. The way that I usually do this is I take whatever I was searching, I put it into Google, and already I found my problem. I spelled Shivago wrong. So I'm going to copy and paste this back into the catalog. And once I hit search, you'll see I immediately have the correct results. There's the movie, there's the book, there's even other things related that are, you know, the untold love story that inspired Dr. Shivago. Very interesting. As, as a fan of Dr. Shivago, that might be really cool to read. Um, so basically, the, like I said, the tip is to make sure that things are spelled right, that they're worded correctly. I know a lot of times, especially with like mystery novels, they have longer titles sometimes that you might have one piece wrong and that's why the catalog is not giving it to you. Use Google to make sure that you're looking for something that actually exists before going in and searching for it in here. Okay, I'm going to close all of these tabs and we're going to start from the beginning again. Um, I didn't point this out earlier, but I always start my searches from the library website, horshamlibrary.org, and I use the search of the catalog feature in the top right-hand corner. So this time I want to search for something by Louise Penny. Now, I don't know how to spell Louise either, so but I know that it's spelled P-E-N-N-Y, just like the coin. So I'm going to type in Penny, and I'm going to hit search. Now, Louise Penny is a really popular author, so she, it's likely that she'll come up first, and she actually did in this case. One thing I want to point out is there are 1,553 results. That's a lot. My goal as a reference librarian is to help you take your results from the huge to the specific, from the I don't know what all this stuff is to the I know what I'm looking for. And in this case, since we're looking for Louise Penny, you'll see right here that it spelled it out for me and it's a blue link that I can click on. It says by Penny Louise author. I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take me to a new page where it says, oh, these are all of the headings that we have under that author. So in this case, we want to look for Louise Penny, and it shows us that there are 126 titles with her listed as an author. That's really fantastic because that's significantly less than 1,500. And now we know we're looking specifically at things by her. Now, I will point out the very first result here is State of Terror, which is by Hillary Clinton and Louise Penny. But you can see by the cover, this one was written by Louise Penny, and it should be included, included as part of her bibliography. Um, and if you scroll down, you'll notice that here's other books by Louise Penny. Now, as we keep scrolling, Let's say, for instance, that I wanted to find a Louise Penny audiobook specifically. Now, as I'm looking through this list, it takes me until our sixth result to see any audiobooks at all. And then if I keep going, there's not many more listed right now unless I go forward in pages. One of the things that I like to point out to people is that on the left-hand side of the page, under Narrow Your Search, these are all of your, as I like to call them, limiting tools. And what they do is they allow you to narrow your search, like it says, and it allows you to make things more specific while using the tools and what's built into the catalog so that you're not making stuff up and stumbling through it. So what I mean by that is up here it says type of material. If I'm looking for an audiobook specifically, this third option here is audiobooks, and there's only 47 of them. If I click that, I'm now down to 47, and you'll see every single item is an audiobook that you could listen to in different formats. 
Now, my next question is, is this book, is this audiobook here at Horsham? Because I'm here in the library right now. I want to leave with something. I want to listen to Louise, Pen Louise Penny on my commute home. But I can't tell if these are here because right now I'm searching in Micklink. When you search from this box on our website, it searches through all of Micklink rather than specifically at Horsham. Now, this is where the limiting tools come into handy. So if you scroll down on the left side, you'll see there's one that says assigned branch, one of the options. And if I click more, there we are, Horsham Township Library. We have 11, so we have 11 at Horsham that are audiobooks that are by Louise Penny. And these are all of them. So let's scroll, let's scroll. Let's say that I wanted to listen to The Long Way Home to see where it is. I would click, where is it? And this is showing me other libraries, but if I scroll down a little bit, you will see Horsham Township Library. That book is in, and it's shelved, audio, F for fiction, penny. And I would be able to go walk over to the audiobook shelf and grab that audiobook for myself today, which is fantastic. Now, one of the new features that we have in the catalog is that the digital collection, our OverDrive collection, is now listed in this catalog. You can technically check out these books and place holds for yourself in them. I'm not going to show you how to do that today, but I am going to show you how to see whether or not it's listed in OverDrive. So we're going to take off a few of our limiting features over here. So we're going to take off audiobooks, so we're seeing everything again, and we're going to take off Horsham Township Library. So there's a couple different ways to do this. One way is you can click electronic resources, and that gives you 50. But you'll notice that not all of them have this blue O for OverDrive. If we want to see just what's available in OverDrive, I'm going to uncheck electronic resources. I'm going to scroll down. And you'll see that one of the locations, one of the assigned branches, is OverDrive. And now every single item has that blue O, which is technically a white O and a blue square, but I call it the blue O. That means that that item is available in OverDrive. Whether or not it's available right now, you'll have to jump over and check in OverDrive. But at the very least, you can search for everything in just one place. That's a new feature for the catalog. And it's really nice just to make sure, oh no, unfortunately that book's not at the library. Is it in OverDrive? And you don't have to jump to a new page. You can just see right here, oh, they do have it in OverDrive. Hopefully I can place a hold on it. Okay, the next and my final tip is how to search for things that you don't know about. So f what I'm talking about is I really like hockey. And I've read a ton of the hockey books that we have here in the library. And I'm certain that there's more, but I can't seem to be able to find them. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to type in hockey. And I'm going to hit enter and search. And it shows me 896 items. Now, like I said, my goal is to take you from a large amount of results to a small amount of results so that you can find something more specifically. So this first book, What is the Stanley Cup? I love the What is series. They're absolutely amazing. And I've read this one before and I know that it has good information. I also particularly like kids nonfiction books because they just give me information and it doesn't take a lot of time to read them. So I'm going to click on the title of this book and it's going to bring me into this book's page. And there's a bunch of different stuff that you can click on here, right? You can click on the author. You can click on the title itself again. You can look through the different series. I want to bring your attention to the subjects. The subjects are what the catalogers of the librarians use to make the catalog keep things cataloged. It puts them in different categories so that the catalog knows what to bring up. And you can use that to your advantage by telling the catalog, I want this specific subject, and they get very specific. For instance, here we can get as specific as the National Hockey League, the NHL, the history in juvenile literature. So we want specifically books about the history of the National Hockey League in juvenile literature. That's really highly specific and will definitely give me less than the 800 or 900 results I got earlier. If that's a bit too specific, I can go out a cup, down a couple levels and look at just hockey history in juvenile literature. That sounds pretty good. So let's click on that one. And it's going to bring me again to this page where I'm browsing headings, which again, they're just subjects. They're just things that the catalog uses to organize things. And the first option gives me 28 books that are listed as hockey history in juvenile literature. That's exactly what I'm looking for right now. So I'm going to click on that. 
you'll notice that my first option is going to be the same book that I saw earlier. It won't always be the first one, but it's going to be in the list. But if I scroll down, you'll see, oh, the Rangers, I don't want to read about them. Um, if I keep going, I can see all sorts of amazing books that we have. And here we go, num option number nine, the Philadelphia Flyers hockey team. Of course I want to read about the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm going to click on this one. So let's say I actually just want to read about the Flyers. Maybe I want to find more books about them. If I go into the subject, you'll see the first one is Philadelphia Flyers hockey team history juvenile literature. And if I go in, again, you can see, I can see all there are six books about the Philadelphia Flyers. That's incredible. This is going to give me so many options. And I can see the history of the Philadelphia Flyers, and they're all juvenile books. We've only gone through two different subject headings, and we are at a much more specific place than we were when we started. We went from just the word hockey all the way to the local hockey team that plays in the NHL. This is perfect. Using these subject headings is such a great way to browse the library while not actually being here. I'm the sort of person that doesn't know what he wants when he walks into the library. So this is a great way to say, well, I want to read something about hockey. I want to read something that includes hockey in any way, shape, or form. Then I can use these subject headings to get more specific until I get to the one book that I want, and I can check that one out. Um, so these are just some basic tips. The catalog can do a million other different things. You can find a million different other things. I've made other videos on how to place holds, how to cancel holds, and I'll make more videos in the future on other tools that you can use from the library. But for now, these three tips I thought would be really helpful just to get you from, I want this book or I want this thing. Is it in the library and how do I find it? I'm hoping that these tips will be helpful for you. If they're not, or if you need any more help or any clarification on anything, always feel free to contact me here at the library. You can come see me anytime during the week. I'm usually here, and if I'm not, they'll give you my phone number or they'll give you my email address. I'll list them in the comments or in the description down below, and you can contact me anytime you need help. All right, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope that you're able to find what you're looking for. Have a great day. Bye.